Thank you. I um, just want to say a quick hello. I'm just making a little gift tag to go inside my tin because I said I'd do it as a giveaway. So I'm just looking for getting all the bits of stuff that I need to be able to finish it off so that I've got somewhere to write and it just looks properly finished. So that's that done. So I'm going to do a little recap of what I've actually done. Now I just want to show you this quick little trick because I've just cut this with a pair of scissors. In fact, I'm going to start from the beginning because it's quite interesting. So first of all, I wanted to cut a little tag, a gift tag. So I just trimmed it with my scissors. Now, it's important that when you do this, a big hello to everybody, if you're just joining. Um, it's our second Facebook Live of the day. So it's really nice to have everybody's company. Hi, Lorraine in Spain. How's the weather? Oh, sunny. Oh, gosh. Wow, we've had some great weather over here, but it hasn't lasted. So, um, well, it looks like it's you and me, Lorraine. Oh, no, there's lots of you. Oh, gosh, sorry, everybody else. Um, just nobody's commented. Hi, everyone. Good, good evening. Um, I'm just going to get started and show you this quick little tip. So, first of all, I wanted to cut a little mini card to go in the tin that I made earlier. That's my giveaway. And for anybody who wasn't on earlier, I will just quickly recap what I did there. But I, So, I've just used a pair of scissors and I've slipped it off a piece of A4 card. Important thing, I need to remember which were the original straight edges. So, that was one and that was one. This one and this one have been cut with a pair of scissors, so they're not going to be perfect. So what I do is I fold this over so that it is level along that side there. So as soon as I've got it level there, then I know that I've got a straight edge and I can trim that piece off there. Once I've got that level, it's much easier to cut that at a right angle so that, I'm just cut it from both sides because I, so I can make sure I've got it right. So that I know that I've then got a perfect rectangle. If I just check that against my cutting mat, it should be pretty close. And you can see it is all the way around. My lines are quite straight. Not perfect at the top because that's the one edge that isn't against the straight line. But I have always figure three out of four is not bad. So that's going to sit inside here. I've got myself a little piece of card that I'm going to use to just stick inside so that I've got somewhere to write. So hi, Claire, how are you? I'm sunny in Kent. Rain, of course, it's boiling hot. Then um, looking forward to another fabulous show. Thank you, Carol. Ja Janice, hi, how are you? All the way in Farnham. Wow, I haven't been there for years. And also, Marion's in Bedford. Um, good to have your company, everybody. Really nice to talk to you. So, this piece of white card isn't straight, so I'm actually going to do a little bit of trimming. So, what I've done is, I know that three sides of it are, are okay, so I'm just going to put that inside the card. Anything that's left is going to stick outside the top. I'm going to trim that level. So now, when that goes in there, it should fit more perfectly. So just as a quick reminder, and I'll do that again, and I'll show you how easy it is and what a difference it makes. So let me cut there. So I take my parallel side, and so that's this edge here, and I'm going to tuck that in against the fold, okay? So that's the first thing I do, and I trim along there. Then I open it up, keep it against the fold, push it down to the other end and trim there. Always keep it against the fold, then open it up. And when you place that in there, you should have parallel there, parallel there and parallel there and parallel there. And you get a much, well, it's a bit of a cheat, but it actually it works. So who, who minds if we have to do a little bit of cheating? to get something to be perfect. So I'm just going to quickly do this and get some tape pen. You can see I'm recycling bits of cardstock because we're trying to be really thrifty. I'm going to place that in there like that. 
and then this is going inside my tin. Right, so for anybody who wasn't watching earlier, how did I do it? What did I do with my little tin? So that's ready for a little message in there. So the first thing I did right at the very back, and I'm just gonna see if I can get this polis out, I can. So right at the very back, I stuck myself a, um, one of the decorative flowers. And let me just tell you what this um, tutorial is all about. So I've got Atagant's collection. It's four die sets. You've got, um, you've got a special price for nest members. So we've got In the Garden Clover. I've got In the Field Poppy. I've got by the Stream Yellow and Motley, Go Motley Grasses. So they're the four. Now these are actually little mini bouquets. So they're fabulous for doing projects like this. So this one, first of all, I put in the back of the tin, which you can see there. Then I've got a piece of construction acetate, but it's got sides on it. So I've folded down the sides, so I've created like a platform. So this is raised off the back, then done all of my assembly on the top so that I have got a little mini bouquet of flowers when you open up the tin and there's a little message in there. So this is going to go to one of you after the show because I'm actually going to send that out. We'll put something on Facebook and um, get you to put your names... Do you know, I'm going to ask you to go to the Highlight Crafts website and just make sure that you have registered. No, I can't do that because I don't know when you've, what, who will, how I'll pick a winner. Just, I'll tell you what, just comment on the video and we can pick somebody from that. That'll be fair then because I know how to do that. Right, that's all going in the bin. I'm going to show you some more designs. Then I want to talk to you about a couple of other quick things. Oh, and I'm, <laughs> ah, I, I'm a bit covered in paint. So going to give you a sneaky um, peek of my brand new painting pages that are coming out on Friday morning. And I'm going to show you what I've been painting this afternoon. So I hope I'm really going to inspire you. And I'm a little bit excited because I've worked a couple of new um, new things out that I think you're going to like. So first of all, let's take a look at this. So we've used here, this is our lovely design team have all got together to make these for us. So I think this one was um, Louise, yeah. So we've got a lovely oval and then created the dimension of the design. So the idea is that the flowers fall out and then we put the little butterflies at the top. And just to give you an idea, of how that sizing would have originally been. That was the original. So what Louise has done is she's actually trimmed along the back edge and put, so if she's gone there, then put extra flowers in, extra flowers here and extra elements to the edges to add more dimension. Now for those extra elements, she's dug into this motley set of grasses, which is really, really useful. So you've got all of those. So that's the first one I wanted to share. This is one that Kat's done. Now a couple of little things I wanted to do here. Um, this bit's a little bit loose, so potentially that might come off. So I'm just gonna show you what I do. I get my little scissors in here because it's very, very fine at that point. It's just a tiny point. And I'm then gonna take my adhesive and I'm just gonna put it over there. So I move this right down. So that, that petal, that flower head, the clover is actually, now look how much more stable that is. So this is, um, this is one that um, Kath did. And she's actually used, <laughs> Andrew. Um, so everybody, just so you look, you can see I've got this earpiece thing in. Um, Andrew's upstairs talking to me so that I can talk to you on the camera. He's got these, I don't know, these tools and things. A bit baloney if you ask me, because I'm not good on TV stuff. And um, he is up there talking to me. So he's talking in my ear and he says, I can't believe that you just cut into Kath's, uh, Kath's um, beautiful card. I did, but it was to show you all a top tip. And I know Kath won't mind because she's absolutely lovely. So yeah, so there, Andrew. Um, so what I've done is just shown you how to reinforce that little bit. And then on when I'm posting something like this, 
where you've got these very delicate little flowers because this is going to go on somebody's mantelpiece and it's going to stay there for a while because it's so beautiful. I would just move that very slightly so that it all holds together. And then what Kath did at the back is she's used two of those little fountain, um, of, it, was the, it was the garden statue fountain, and she's made it into this. So that's the second one I want to show you. Another one here, this was at Louise, um, and this is using the jam jar. Love the way we've created this lovely L shape, which really looks fabulous. So these are the primulas that are the yellow flowers, and they're really bringing everything together. And these flowers are so delicate, everybody. It's just really fine and detailed and just um, very usable. And because they're wildflowers, they're never going to go out of fashion. So this is another one that's absolutely gorgeous. And inside, you've got that background that just adds a little bit of colour. Now, I was thinking about this. What could you do if you didn't have that background? Get your alcohol markers and get some photocopy paper. Not anything that's um, really good or stamping card or anything like that because you want the ink to bleed a little bit. Use photocopy paper, lots of little dots, and you'll get that effect that we've got there for the tree. And then you've got the detail. Now, because I've just weakened that branch there, um, because I'm going to be taking these with me to Doncaster, that is literally the weekend after next. So, I mean, talk about exciting. It's going to be one of the biggest shows that we've ever done. And the, the projects for the workshop, I'm super proud of. Mel and I made um, 30 last night and um, we're going to be doing another 30 tonight. This is for the Friday workshop. And then we've got over a thousand make and take places. So please, if you don't already have your tickets, come and join us because it's going to be fab. So I've got those two ready to take with me. Then this one, absolutely love it. I love the way the little butterfly is just coming in to where the flowers are. You've got that basket there. The colours look fabulous. And there's a real depth to this as well. And you can see that the detail in this, now I'll wait till Andrew actually gets to us so you can see it there. And I'm just going to pop my hand underneath and look at that. Look how much detail you've got in these flowers. They're not being, um, they haven't got cardstock behind them. That has all been done by the density of the bouquets. Um, this one, is rather exquisite and this one is an oval that then shows you the design inside this is one of Steve's he's getting very good at planning these cards that take you on a story where you go from the front of the design and the story continues on the back so love that and see how he's lined the clovers up with the inside I think that's a really clever thing to point out and then I wanted to show you these two reeds now this is one that um, Louise did this one. And what she's done is she's backed it onto a double-sided piece of acetate to give us that dimension. But I want to share with you this one. So if you don't want this look where you've got the acetate on the inside, this is one that I did earlier and I did this while I was doing um, the last Facebook Live. Uh, well, this was at one o'clock and you could go back and watch it. And basically what I did was I took a circle that I could use to be able to lay the design on to give us this much dimension. Now what I realised was I didn't, I didn't make it freestanding. So I want to do that now. And to make it freestanding, I've got a little piece of, and you can see it's just there, a piece of acetate. And I'm just going to fold over that top edge like that and make sure that's straight, which ish is, it sort of is ish. Let me just trim that level just there. And I'm just going to fold that down and get a really nice strong crease. I'm going to go to my red liner tape, take a little bit of that tape across here 
and oh actually what's just happened is this was happening earlier I've got two rolls of tape that are stuck together and I'm actually putting both of them down at one time so I'm gonna I've got two lots of backing to get off here so I can get that first one off but I've got to get the, the other one off because it's underneath and if I don't um, the liner you can see it will just peel off and we won't get it as sticky as we need so I'm just going to place that bit of tape down there, take that back off. So I've got it off and it's, there we go. Right. I'm now thinking about where this is going to go and where my butterflies are going to go. So I think it's going to go about there. So I'm literally lining it up across this part of the design to see where it's going to go. I've got to take into consideration this little piece. So I'm afraid that's going to have to, I'm going to have to lose that little bud there. And I think that that will do the job and it will. So there we go. So I've got that little piece of acetate behind that is holding up my frame. And if I just turn this around, this shows you how well these dies have been designed. There is literally nothing else supporting it. So really strong and sturdy, giving us that extra little bit of support. Now, if you felt that this was too flimsy on the sides and you wanted more dimension, remember, we don't want that shiny acetate coming through. The other thing that you could do is take a very, very slim, um, piece on either side to just support it but I don't I'm trying not to get that glossy finish showing through the design so the other thing I've been asked about well what about if I use my outline dies to cut out an aperture so one in the middle and one in the outside that works except you're going to have to to get this look you're going to need to go round the edges of all of these and that means quite a little quite a lot of cutting out so if we want to go from this effect which is equally beautiful to this one two different looks and feels but it gives you the choice so that's the thing that I did at, um, at lunchtime um okay Oh no, I, I will get slated on social media for telling you this. No, I'm going to get slated on social media, just full stop. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm used to telling the truth. So I'm going to tell you the truth. First of all, I thought today was the 23rd. It's not, it's the 28th. So I got, I had a bit of a, last night when Carl was talking about um, what we were doing at the weekend, because we were celebrating our anniversary at the weekend, I was like, oh, well, that's okay, because I've got till the weekend. Then this morning, he presented me with a card, and I thought, and then I got a couple of cards from other people. I thought, oops, I've got a problem. So I did then say to him, we are celebrating at the weekend, aren't we? And I said, and she, he said, yes. So I felt that was quite fine. <laughs> anyway, the lovely Mel Heaton saw, because she stayed with us last night, saw what a pickle I was in this morning <laughs> and at lunchtime. She went and fetched me a husband card <laughs> and brought it in. So I walked in and I've got one on my desk. So actually, I've got myself out of a pickle later on, or Mother Mel's got me out of a pickle, but I've got till the weekend to do it properly. So, and um, I'll just tell him this Facebook Live didn't go ahead. <laughs> That's bad, isn't it? Oh dear, never mind. It's all, it's all good fun. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, I wanted to just talk to you about this because I'm about to use this new box in the things. I'm just thinking about how close I sail to the wind sometimes at getting into trouble. So just the one is the box die that I'm going to work with at the moment. It's a fabulous little tin and um, you're going to save £5.40 or if you're a Nest member, say £6.66 and it's actually 11 33 and there are six dies. It says five, but there are six. OK, although the last one's very, very teeny. So I just I love corned beef, you know, some people really can't can't stand it, can they? But oh, corned beef. Is one of my favourites. 
they have, I think they can get corned beef fritters around here as well. Um, right, so a little bit of adhesive. What's everybody having for their tea? Um, Andrew's having whatever his wife is cooking him. Well, he, he says he bought, he bought a Domino's last night, so he's, she's going to cook for him tonight. Just checking where that's going. It's going to go just there. So we'll do that. So um, I wonder what we're having. I, it's something diet. That's. I, last night, I actually asked if we could have for tea um, smoked mackerel and pilchards. I know some people really don't like that, but Mel loves smoked mackerel and pilchards. Oh, Lorraine's having pasta baked. That sounds good. I wonder what flavour. Lorraine, tell us. Oh, can you tell us what flavour, please? Um, really would like to know. Oh, Kay's having maple syrup pork line. That sounds delicious. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's just get some shape on these. Um, we've got some beef lasagna going on. These are bacon pasta bake. That sounds yummy. We had um, we had salad last night with some home cooked ham, which was just delicious. And I have to say, a mackerels tonight. Right. So this is going to sit just here and look at us. So I'm just going to pull my stand down, so I'm going to work flat. So that's going to sit just there. Now, what I need to do with this is I'm going to use my wet glue. So I'm just going to put a little bit of my pin flare glue down and let that go there. Give there. Apparently, it's quite a lot of wet glue, but it'll dry. So that's going to go there. And to make sure that this is good for the post and everything else. I'm just going to catch that little bit. Look at the difference it makes just putting that, those two little pieces of decoupage on. I'm just going to lift this one off without and with. Real, it is quite a considerable difference. So, and I've just cupped them in like little pieces. So they look fab. Now I've got this piece that's left and actually that would work there really well. So I don't think I'm going to need to do much to this except put my glue on. So we'll get that glue going here. So I'm going to lift this piece up and slide it under and let that get some height to that part of the design. So just catch you down. So you can see now how I'm creating this shape that's going on. Now, this part of the tin is where we want the main part of the story. So I'm going to look at how my um, poppies could go in here. And I need to make sure that my tin lid comes through to the front. So I've got a little bit of the acetate just there. So I'm just going to trim that off so that when I snip down here behind those flowers, that lid will come to the front. That flower is going to go to the back, so I'm just going to hold that for a second. And that lid comes to the front. So this then goes behind here. So, oops, I need to, I've got a snip there that needs is needed. And another one round that part of that daisy. So it's going to go. And this is one of the things that spend a lot of time doing, everybody, is looking at where my snips are going to go and how I'm going to get the detail. So look at now what I've done here with the way that I'm building this design up and I've got this, these elements of decoration. So I'm just going to turn this over. Don't press too hard because we've still got um, our pin flare glue gel there. But I'm just going to let this, in fact, a quicker way of doing it would be just the smallest amount of liner tape underneath. So that means I need to take the back off it, which is relatively easy to do. Lay that down and then pull that fab, um, flower over the top. So that's all in a good place. So my tin lid looks like it's leaning to the front, which is great. 
I need a bit more um, decoration around here. So I'm going to go into these elements and I'm going to take out this flower, this daisy, which just literally snipping along the pips. And this is one of the things that I do love about these designs is that you can be, you know, you can be really quite quick with the cutting because they're designed to just run along those little pips and it works so, so easily. So I've got those elements out. So that's that part of it that's going to be decoupaged. So again, I'm just going to get some shape in this. Get this going in different directions and then pop this down. Hi, everybody who's just joined. Loads of you just coming in at the last half hour. Thank you. Um, oh, gosh, can I say, do you know, a ton of people have got their Christmas designs um, it sold out so super fast, the, the Christmas Eve collection. I've had lots of emails from people saying, is it coming back? Absolutely. We've just ordered it. It will be back in about, I'm, I'm getting updates all the time. It's going to be two to three weeks. Um, we're going to get that back. And I will try and make sure that you guys find out before anybody else does that we've got it to make sure that you don't feel like you've missed out. Right, now, I'm just gonna show you what I've done here. So I've trimmed that round and I've sort of curved that part of the petal to make it look, look like it's been decoupaged so that this can sit just there like that piece. Um, so yes, and we have still got some of the other Christmas designs on the website so check those out and of course you can download all your charisma while you're waiting for the other designs to well, waiting for the designs to come through so now we can see how we've taken that tin we've used the lid to get extra dimension i've only layered up once with my decoupage just going to see if i can get out I've got a bit of red there oh no it is loose so i can get the rid of that and then down here, all of these little primroses, it looks very, very yellow. I want to add something in here to, to give us a bit more detail. So I'm going to come into my design, this one, and I'm going to just get these little flower heads that I've got here. And there's, um, there's also, I don't need that poppy seed head because that wouldn't be, that would be not appropriate. But I can pop that one behind here like that so immediately you can see it's broken everything up so let's get some glue on the back of there and put that on this and then i've been crafting all day today i didn't you know it was um it was really really apparently i've been quite quiet it was really or just been amazing um <laughs> and she said I've been unusually quiet and it's been amazing and nice. Um, I have to say, if it wasn't for me, we'd have been late for this Facebook Live. Because I was the one that said, um, don't you think we ought to go? <laughs> so anyway, he was completely engrossed in his editing. He was editing Mel, I think. Um, oh, he's doing photographs today. So it fit, do you know what everybody, it feels really strange when I'm talking to myself because while I'm crafting, I'm not reading the screen. So I don't even know if there's anybody there. I'm like thinking I might just literally be talking to myself and, oh, and of course Andrew, but he could be fictitious too, couldn't he? Can you see that little bit of detail that I've got there? Just want to lift that up. Right, so I need to make that this stick. So a piece of glue there and then a little bit of glue there. I'd like to ask you, if you weren't a crafter, what would you be? What would be your hobby if it wasn't for craft? <laughs> Andrew says he'd be an astronaut. If, uh, if he wasn't, if he wasn't, what do you mean if you weren't real? Oh, no. I think if I wasn't a crafter, I would be uh, a puppy. Yeah, I'd come back as a puppy. Because 
puppies get really spoiled. Um, I would, yeah, I'd come back as a puppy or what else would I be? Uh, I wouldn't be a piece of paper. Could you get chopped up? And did you? Did, that's no, apparently Andrew's just said if you fold a piece of paper 42 times, it'll reach the moon. In half, 42 times. Mm. Not convinced. I need to check that out myself. Right. Let's take a look at this. So we've got these lovely little bouquet of flower elements at the bottom. Now, this is our, our um, baseline here. So that means that this collection needs to be just folded up a tiny little bit. Otherwise, that isn't going to work. So I've just folded that this way, folded it out and made it sort of like a base die. I'm just checking that all the elements of it are stuck where they need to be to make this as sturdy as possible. Now I'm going to take the stand that I've got here and just turn that back. And then I'm going to cross my fingers and make sure that this is going to stand up. So I'm just going to lean that back a tiny bit to get the detail and make sure it's right. Ta-da! Um, isn't that lovely? So you've got, you've used the tiniest little stand of acetate. We've got that lovely bit of detail at the back and the whole thing just looks really fabulous. And it's freestanding. So let's say hello to Kay, which, hi Kay. And Carol, hi. Carol's going to be a cat. Um, Janice would be a traveller. Or... And Kay would be rich. <laughs> so would it be Carol? Can I ask a question? If it's not about the collection, was wondering would you be getting Carts and Spades collection back? I have every single collection apart from that one. Hearts and Spades. Do you know what, Lorraine? I will um, check that out for you and I will do my very, very best. And if you send me an email with your details on I'll let you know when it's happening and what we've got for you um Carol's having cold chicken and veggies followed by egg custards all prepared by my hubby and I'm under the weather oh dear bad oh gosh boost of um covid um our Amanda's got um covid at the moment she's not very well either so we're hoping she gets better soon we um Andrew spoke to it today she sounds really poorly um so hi to everybody. Um, Lorraine says thank you. And of course, we will do that for you. So right, we've still got time to do another demonstration. So let's have a little think about what we want to do this time. Because these flowers are just so super pretty. They're going to lend themselves to go with all the other things that you have got in your collection. So I am going to just quickly show you what can we do with what I've got left. I'm just checking what I've got left. Okay, right, I'm gonna do something with the clover, okay, because I've got a few clovers. So this was one I stuck earlier because I was starting to do, get some um, dimension to this. I know what I'll do. Right, so, this is from one of the apertures. So actually, no, I'll do it now with this one. Right, so this is my oval from my um, viewfinders. So we're going to come into here and we're going to get, we'll do a little bit of quick scoring. So I'm going to score there. I'm going to turn that round and I'm going to score on this side. I've got a speed craft because I need a few minutes to still show you some stuff I'm doing for painting. I'm going to fold that one in. Apologies if you've seen me do this one before and fold that one in. So I've got that. That is now my card freestanding. But is that going to work? Yes, I think it will. Okay, so what we're going to do now is... 
we're going to cut a slit here and a slit here and a slit here okay so we're getting three slits then I'm going to fold this in half because I need now to, to go to where the slits are so there's one so I'm cutting little snips where the slits are there's two there and here's three here okay so I've cut three little slits one or six little slits two three corresponding um, cuts across the other side now you need to um, I'm do I am doing this quickly everybody but I'm going to put this part of the clover around this part of the design so I'm just going to go quite quickly round here let's put some little dots for now hopefully that will dry quickly enough and I need to make sure that my glue doesn't go more than halfway so let me just line this up and find my halfway marks there so I need to make sure that glue doesn't go too far because otherwise this isn't going to work so that's there I'm going to put a little bit of foliage going this way and I'm going to need a little bit more clover just there behind so we're going here I'm not doing any measuring so this might not be perfect but you'll get the idea like that so yep that looks good right then I'm just going to bring that bit of greenery in there and actually no that would be better I think just slip into this bit not quite sure this is where this is from I think it's from my little yellow flowers I'm just going to tuck that in there uh, a little bit here Andrew how long have I got left oh I've got loads of time I can do this properly right okay so right so like that did you did you guys see what I did then so there the these are some little um the yellows by the stream yellows so they're going there let's get those tucked in a little bit more yellow to tuck in just here so I, where's my glue gone my glue 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 where are you over there got it so we just get that now this one is going to tuck under there like that so starting to get I've got a gap here which needs something so I'm going to go into this and let's snip out our clover so let's take it there like that and to there like that still too high so I have to snip down and take it out there so that little clover head's going to go just there and we'll pop you there tuck you around then this one another one here so then take that bit around make sure I've shaped the leaf so it didn't look like it's just chopped off so just shape it and tuck it there so got a bit of detail to that piece and this one is just going to tuck in here oh, I need to just get that in the right position like that so it's filled that gap and looks like it should be so I'm going to backfill which is easier with a syringe but you can do it just go underneath and backfill there so I've got that bit of detail all right I'm happy with that now like the way it looks I think it's all pretty right this is what you do next so we now need to crease that quite firmly there crease this one quite firmly and then this rolls round and what I've got to do is tuck each one of those into the 
into the bottom. So that, it it'll take me a second to do this, but it's worth it. So this one goes in first. So in you go. Like, I just need something to mix. Yeah. Just going to open it up a little bit. If you take your time, you'll make sure it's perfect. But I just want to make sure I can do it fairly quickly. So that bit goes in. That one. That one's in. This one goes in there. That one's... Oh, come on in. In, 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 in. And the third one, you've got to get in at the same time. Otherwise, the middle one pops out. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. So I've got them all in. Now I've got to just make sure that this isn't, isn't being squashed there. And there is my design. And when Andrew gets to the front, there's the design. And what you do is you slide a bar of chocolate into here and it fill, fits dairy milks. How do I know that? Because I've done it. I've done it before. But that gives you the chance to do that. But the other thing is you can go to these, the back of here, and I can fill this with more flowers and get, make it so that it's like a flower box. So just another little idea. But really, the secret is this, because it does stay done up until you actually want to send it through to somebody. And do you know what? Just because we can, let's fill the back and do this. And then I'll show you what I've been painting today because I'm, I'm rather proud. Um, so we'll pop you there. We'll pop this one, this side, just there. Get that stuck. Come, hold, 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 hold. Stick, stick, stick. That's two out of three. And the last one is in the middle, which will be this piece. So that is going to stick there. So let me get you stuck there. There you go. So that's those. And I'm just going to pop pop a couple of little bits of glue on. Right, just going to give you a quick reminder of where you're going to find your reflections and at a glance collection. So if you go into the website, click on Craft TV, that's where you find all your videos and everything. And then you'll find all the other elements that are all part of the designs and everything that we're doing. So you should find everything there and that gives you everything that you need to work with. Okay, so there's our little window box card that we've done. So in Facebook Lives today, we've done our freestanding wreath and how to create the wreaths and create the shapes. We've done our little tin that is coming and going out to somebody. And then we've also got our little faux tin that's full of flowers and then we've got our um, card and I'm just going to open this up so that you can see that this opens up like, just have to make sure they're not tangled, like that to go through the post with just a little set of instructions on how you fold that round and you make it into the shape that I've got here. Right, so now one second while I just move some of this, building up the suspense as I go, while I show you what I'm going to paint on Friday and my new Christmas painting pages. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to paint poinsettias. Let me keep this down here so Andrew can show you. So I'm gonna show you how to paint poinsettias and the wreath that we've got here. And this is what we're going to be doing, okay? So poinsettias, the wreath, and this one's not finished. I've got one more little thing to put there. I wonder what it might be. I'll show you that in a second. Right now, Andrew, you're gonna to have to go um, look at me, I'm afraid.
Actually, hang on a minute. No, no, go back. Go back. Just go back. Yep. Okay. Now look at me. <laughs> Can you see me yet? my husband loves me as I am there you go so that's another what design and then this one <laughs> this is the other one that I'm going to do so these are all designs from the new collection <laughs> don't put paper bags on your head at home it's not a good thing um, but these are some of the designs that we're doing so um, I'm going to teach you bows we've done, we've learned ivy we're going to do the fern leaves we're going to do poinsettias, we're going to do pine cones, mistletoe, we're going to do mistletoe, we're going to teach you that, and of course, um, our wreaths. And um, don't forget also, you can paint along with our free workshop or free painting class every month. Sign up to the emails on Highlight Crafts dot com and you'll get all the information it'll come through it's a zoom workshop and it's all free um an hour and we're doing it every single month just to get everybody crafting and then you can watch them after on youtube i should have cut i should have cut two holes out for eyes because <laughs> i could have worn that for the rest of the show <laughs> anyway everybody stay safe thank you so much for your company i'm back to my painting now and um, I will see you all on Friday morning on Create and Craft. Thank you so much. Don't forget to get your collection. <laughs> see you soon.